starts with being real. One of our values around leading and loving it is no fake, no fear, no phony. We just try to be as honest as we can while also balancing that with the fact that ministry may not always be easy, but it is amazing. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is episode 120 of Audacious Faith, and we're excited. I'm actually here with my wife, uh, Val. She was on one of my earliest episodes, so you can go back and see that if you didn't see it. And we have a special one for you today. In fact, um, I'm fired up about this. Usually, people, when you hear the subject, you think you're fired up about a women's conference, but... <laughs> But I am, because what I saw with this conference a couple of years ago when I took a closer look at it, it's amazing what's happening and the, and the growth and everything that's happened. And so, Val, I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, invite your special guest today. All right. Well, thank you. Well, it is my great pleasure to introduce Lori Wilhite. Uh, Lori is the founder of Leading and Loving It, which is it really is a great, powerful conference for women in leadership and pastor's wives. And she is an author and she's a gifted speaker. And I have to say, I see the, the cow head with the horns. I, yes. was the first conference I went to was Head Hell High. And I was telling Jay about that last night. And mm -hmm. the I remember you walking around on stage with like the, you're slumped over because of the weight and the cow and the, yeah. And it was great. And it made such a big impression. And um, I'm excited because she's an author and a talented speaker, and she's written several books, and my ladies did Eva, uh, Ephesians, and we're looking forward to doing Philippians. Um, she's married, a pastor's wife, two kids, grown kids. Um, she's down to earth. She's fun. I got to spend some time with her at a cohort that she leads for um, pastor's wives and senior pastor's wives, and the passion that she has to help pastors, wives, and women in leadership follow their calling is incredible. And so I'm excited about it. And I thank her very much for being here and doing this with us and giving up her time it, right when conference is right around the corner. So <laughs> listen, I am so excited to be with you guys. Um, thanks for the opportunity to kind of get to share. And you know what? Good for you, Val. That's, I mean, that's been years ago that you um, remember had held high. So um, I've just so enjoyed getting to know you over the last few years. You're such a blessing. So thanks well, thank for the you. opportunity. Lori, I got to tell you a um, little confession. So when Val was first going to the conferences and she could come back very fired up about it. And honestly, previously, I, I was not really thrilled about any conference, <laughs> not just ladies conference, but men's conferences. I would go to some of them. I'd be bored to death. And so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you're, you're fired up. That's great. <laughs> but I went with her one year to just stay in the room and kind of, you know, work there. And she actually got sick. She got COVID. So she ended up missing most of it, came back. But so on the way back from Vegas, we're, we're listening and she said, well, I have all the recordings. Can I put on the recordings? And I was amazed i i was actually hugely impressed by the mm -hmm. quality of the speaking the directness the the fact that it really spoke to the heart not just one speaker but every speaker that i was hearing so i guess my question right off the bat is this conference is kind of unique in its focus and and who it goes to and so what what started it how did, how did this all begin to begin with well if you kind of rewind about 16 years uh, is when I started the organization leading and loving it. And I was just really coming out of time out of a time of, you know, a lot of depression and insecurity and honestly, a lot of fear that God might have made a mistake <laughs> putting me in ministry. And as I as I got kind of back on my feet, I started thinking like, surely, I'm not the only one, like the only one who's had these struggles, the only one who has these challenges. And so I started getting online, trying to find a group of women who I could relate to. And I just couldn't, I couldn't find anybody. And I thought, well, I'll just start this like sad blog and I'll start writing to people who are like me. And it was kind of the birth of leading and loving it at that point. And so really our goal for the last 16 years is just to, be, to, um, you know, acknowledge the uh, challenges of leadership, but to also learn to really, really love what we get to do and 
to do so authentically, very honestly, and hopefully in an encouraging way that can really help lift other people up. So the conference has been going for, I'm going to guess about, this is probably the 12th year. Mm -hmm. And um, it started out as a very small retreat and uh, about a hundred women. And, and it's just like, I think it's the best two days of the year. And, and I will say, I understand what you're saying. I am not one that always loved to go to conferences or loved to go to women's events. I was like, somebody give me something more to eat than a salad. Like give, like I need <laughs> something a little bit different. And so it's not your grandma's women's conference. It's definitely um, a little, um, got a little more behind it than that, but it is an amazing two days where we can just get together. There's a lot of relationship building, a lot of encouragement, but then there's a lot of just for once in the female leader's life, it feels like nobody's eyes are on you. Nobody's watching to see if you're laughing at the jokes or if your hands are up in worship or how into it are you or whatever. You can just be with the Lord and, and let him do in a work in you without having to be in charge of anything or anyone. And so I, I really, really love it. It's a joy for me. Selfishly, I get a lot out of it. And, and I love what you're saying, because there's this stigma, I think, that people have in ministry, men or women, where you have to be perfect. You can't be down. You can't be struggling. You can't be having any of those issues. At least that's the way it used to be. Everyone put on your perfect clothes, go to church, look, you know, before we had filters on the internet, we had filters on the way that we presented mm -hmm. ourselves everywhere, right? No doubt. No doubt. And, and so I, I think what you're saying is so key. Is that what you found that people appreciate about it the, the most is the opportunity to just be honest and to be real? Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're totally right. A lot of us, especially if we're going to be around other other leaders or other people in ministry, definitely want to um, put a strong kind of ace forward. And I understand that, but I just think, I just know that in my darkest days, what I needed from somebody else, from another leader was to know that there was nothing wrong with me. There was nothing weird with me. God had not abandoned me. I, I had struggles that I needed to have him, his help to overcome, but I was not unusual or weird. I needed to know that I wasn't the only one. And so I really think one of the greatest gifts we can give anybody in our lives is the gift of going first. And for us, that looks like the gift of going first with the struggles that are going on in our lives. You know, if I got yelled at in the lobby or something one weekend, it usually makes it into a message. Um, like we just try to be as honest as we can because I just know that's what I needed so desperately. And hopefully it's a gift to other leaders that then gives them the freedom and and hopefully get to the point to st stick it out in ministry, stick it out in marriage, keep it up with their families, and um, but I think it starts with being real. You know, we have a one of our values around leading and loving it is uh, no fake, no fear, no phony. So we just try to be as honest as we can, while also balancing that with the fact that ministry may not always be easy, but it is amazing. And uh, we actually love the church, love ministry, even with all of its challenges. And so having those two things balanced at the same time can sometimes be a little tricky, but I think it's just reality, right? So if we can just give people, other people, the opportunity to do that with us, then that's the goal. You know, and I agree, you know, it's the, the challenges um, that we face in leadership and in ministry. What have you come across or what do you see as some of the most prevalent challenges that women in leadership or pastor's wives or those leading in general face in the church? Oh, well, you know, it's been an interesting few years <laughs> for church leaders, to put it mildly. It's been an interesting few years. So, you know, I feel like we've been on this, what the challenges that we saw, you know, four years ago are very different from the challenges now. In some ways, 
um, especially from like a leadership perspective, but from like a felt need, kind of what's going on in your heart and mind, I think some of those things don't change. You know, um, when you have a friend who has left your church or you had a, a team member um, decide to go to the church down the street or you, you know, had somebody coming after your family on Facebook, like hurt is hurt. I don't care what season you're in. I don't care what your role is. I don't care how big your church is or how small your church is. Hurt is hurt is hurt, right? And we all have it and we all deal with it because that's just part of leading. My husband says, everybody loves you till you lead. And so, and there's a lot of truth in that. And so when you are leading, they're just going to have those things. So we all have that kind of stuff we're dealing with, criticism and and betrayal and pain. And I mean, some of the people that I know who have the most church hurt are church leaders. Mm-hmm. And um, so there, there is that kind of continual thread. I think what we see that changes dynamically depending on the kind of season our culture is in or um, kind of just the season of churches is the leadership side of it starts to shift. So what I've noticed, you know, four, three, four years ago, we were dealing with a lot of completely worn out, completely ready to tap out leaders. And I there is that still exists. It's a little bit better than it was coming out of COVID, which was such an exhausting season. Um, so we've focused a lot on, you know, helping people get stronger, helping rebuild a lot of that kind of stuff. Now, what I think we're looking at is maybe tired in a little bit different way. But I mean, as I talk to church leaders around the country and even around the world, God is doing like a great work in the church right now and like really changing hearts and lives and discipling people in really beautiful ways and and, um, you know, meeting people's needs, maybe it's food relief or, or addiction issues or whatever. And, um, I think God is like doing some crazy powerful stuff right now. And I think as I talk to leaders, what I've been seeing, this is our focus for this year is like, wouldn't it be sad if we watched God do amazing things in our churches and watched him do amazing things in the lives of the people that we minister to, but we didn't let him do an amazing thing in us. And mm-hmm. so like, if this kind of revival situation is going to be happening, it really does need to start in our own hearts and our own lives. And so we're going to be really focusing on that this year as a ministry about just really trying to kind of speak to the heart and the soul of a leader for their own spiritual health, for their own relational health, mental health, all of it. Um, Because I do believe that when we are the healthiest we can be as leaders, that is how we have healthy ministries. And so um, like a, a healthy me becomes a healthy we when it comes to our churches that we lead. And so we're gonna, that's gonna be our, focus this year because I've just talked to too many leaders that are missing out on that kind of aspect. So that's the goal. Now, what you're touching on, um, the leader who, of course, you you, you touched earlier about how people hurt you because people leave and all of a mm-hmm. sudden, once you lead, people react differently. And that is so very true. Um the leader sometimes can't be vulnerable with everybody, right? Because oh. it's used against you. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, how, how is the conference, as you've brought ladies in ministry together, is it allowing um, kind of an outlet to be able to have that connection and to be honest with other people that actually are in the same boat and understand? Well, I think sometimes we get in a problem because we try to equate authenticity with transparency and they're actually quite different so authentic authenticity is being you a hundred percent of the time you're you in the grocery store you're you on the church platform you're you at the soccer game wherever like you are you you're you're just who you are you're authentically you you're not trying to be somebody you're not or put forward something that you're not you're just trying to be completely who you are that's being authentic and you should be that way with everybody But being transparent is different. That is being see-through like a window. (laughs) And we should probably not be see-through with every single person. Um, 
So let me give you an example. Like, a, um, you know, you might say like being authentic would be, um, you know, we're having a challenging time in our marriage. Mm-hmm. Being transparent would be sitting down with somebody and said, say, you know, we had the biggest blowout fight of our marriage last night. And I, you know, I threw something against the wall. Like that's being transparent and authentic, right? Yes. And so I think the goal for a leader is to be completely authentically them at all times and to find a few people that you can be completely transparent with. Um, years ago, uh, Kay Warren told me, I was asking about this kind of issue. And she said, you know, we all have the right to a private life, but we don't have the right to private sin. And that's where transparency becomes really, really important. Um, I was just at a leadership conference this week and um, there was this big, you know, uh, with with a lot of the leadership failures that have happened recently, people were talking about there was no accountability. There's no accountability. And I was like, hold on just a second. Actually, they probably did have accountability, but accountability is only as good as the honesty you bring to it. And if you're lying, then and you're not transparent then there can't be accountability. And so it's super important to have a few people around us that we can be completely transparent with. Now, finding those people when you're in leadership can be really, really challenging. Um, We're not going to act like it's easy. It's very hard. And so for me, I think this is why connecting leaders with other leaders is super important. Um, You know, I have friends, my very closest friends are all around the country, all in ministry, and I can call them and say, you know, this terrible thing happened this week and I'm really spun out by it. And they'll say, you know what, that happened to us last week (laughs) and here's how we handled it and here's how you can pray about it and we're going to pray about it for you or you didn't handle that right. Let us tell you the right way to handle it. And I need those people in my life, but I can lean on them because they're walking maybe not the exact same road, but they're wearing the same shoes and we are, we're doing the best that we can. And so part of the goal for leading and loving it is try to help people create that kind of community for themselves because it is so difficult. Leadership can be so isolating. And so if we can help people make those kinds of connections, then wonderful. Now they have to own that themselves, right? Because they have to be proactive in developing those relationships. But if we can at least set the groundwork where people can have connections like that, um, it's really important because that transparency piece is vital for us to be healthy leaders, but you also have to have safe people. So finding a way to help people, um, you know, discover those kinds of relationships is really important. Awesome. Awesome. Um, And I think that is that part of the reason why you um, added and started your cohorts? Right. Yeah. So I I do a couple of different cohorts in the spring, one specifically for senior pastor's wives, um, just because it can be a very lonely seat. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to get them in my house on my couch <laughs> and we're going to spend a couple of days together. And we're going to laugh a lot and cry a lot and get it all out. Um, and for some people, it's the first time they've ever put voice to some of the hurts that they've had in their lives. And, and my hope is that when they leave, even if they haven't made new besties, that they can be like, when I hit a hard time, I know who I can text. Right. I know who I can call, or I've got some other people who will understand. And then hopefully that continues to develop over time. But it was certainly the foundation for that. And I hope we're able to give people, you know, all the practical things of ministry and encouragement. But ultimately, we call it our girl gang. If we can help somebody develop a girl gang in their life that can like be there for them and lift them up, then we that's the win. That's the big win. Yeah. And I got to attend one of those and it was great. Um I mean, I felt very out of my league and I sat there and didn't say a whole lot, but it was great, the relationships and the friendships that came from that, you know, and then to be able to, you know, shoot a text in group me, hey, this is coming up. Can you all pray for this and pray for each other was really invaluable. You know, it was definitely, yeah, it was fabulous. So this conference, you said you you actually started a conference about 12 years ago, you said, right? And then- um, 
it, it's gotten pretty big. I, I'm just curious because God always knows things before we do. When this idea, he first put it in your head, I mean, did you have any idea that it would really branch out the way it is? <laughs> no. When I started leading and loving, I actually thought like maybe my own staff will be encouraged. And I kind of didn't think much beyond that. And then just leaders started coming kind of out of the woodwork. When we when the idea of a retreat came up, the first people kept saying you should do a conference, you should do a conference. And I was like, we're not doing a conference. A conference seemed big and hard and like a lot of work and expensive. And I just was like, nope, we're not going to do that. And then one day somebody said you should do a retreat. And I don't know what it was about the word difference, but I thought I can do a retreat that feels doable. And so it was called retreat for a very long time. Even when it was not a retreat anymore, we still called it retreat because I just, my own insecurities <laughs> felt like maybe if I just drop people's expectations, we can handle it. But we acknowledge now it is a conference. There's too many people for it to be called a retreat, but, um, but I, I, I am thankful that the Lord did not fully reveal his vision to me when I started because I might have chickened out. And um, you know, and in his in his way, as the Lord does, um, he has grown me as he's grown leading and loving it, which has been, you know, a real gift and a hard stretch at times. But um, you know, we're really blessed by all the women who attend the conference and who are just part of leading and loving it in general. So you mentioned earlier in the podcast about it first, you know, out of own insecurities. I mean, a lot of people have what they call imposter syndrome and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, who am, who am I? That's the conversations we have with ourselves, right? right. Who am I to start something? Nobody's going to come. Nobody's going to show up. Nobody's going to do anything like that. So what do you say now to the woman who possibly is going to come to the conference or has, and God's put something in their head and they just keep saying no, because they don't think it's ever going to work. Yeah, well, listen, been there um, yeah. <laughs> many times for many different reasons. I have had that Moses at the burning bush moment so many times that like, you know, who am I? I don't, well, I can't speak good. I'm no good. I Like I've had that moment so yeah. many times. And I think I would just encourage you with what really set me straight in this path. Um, I was in the TSA line at the Miami airport where all good spiritual things happen, apparently. And I'm standing to go, <laughs> waiting to go through TSA. And I was with a friend and I was having that moment. I was like, you know, I, I don't know that um, if I'm a good enough pastor's wife, I don't know if I'm a good enough mom. Uh, you know, I was just having the moment mm -hmm. and my friend just like dropped her bags on the ground and put her hands on my shoulders and said, you know, Lori, I just have one question to ask you. Do you believe God's sovereign or not? Mm. And I was like, this is such an easy church answer. Yes, of course. I believe he's sovereign. What, you know, and she said, then, then my follow-up question is, then do you not think he knew what he was doing when he made you the pastor's wife at your church? Do you think he didn't know what he was doing when he made you Judd's wife or your kid's mom or, or the, you know, the, the founder of this ministry, do you, do you think he didn't know what he was doing? If you, do you think he's sovereign or not? And, and she was a little like that with me, a little bold. And that I was slower to respond to. And I told her I would think about it because I, I thought, you know what, I, if I'm going to be serious about this answer, I need to take some time. I literally took like two weeks to like really decide if I believed he was sovereign, not just for everybody else, but for me. Right. In my life and the things he had put me in knowing all, I think it was just like the very lengthy list of all of my weaknesses and failures were up against, does God know what he was doing? Right. And I had to get to the point where I could rest in the fact that God knew all of those weaknesses, all of those failures and chose me anyway. And that if he chose me, that I had to find the confidence to do what he had asked me to do. And so um, even though I still have those like, you know, what's up with me moments like Moses, that is the question I ask myself. Do I believe God's sovereign in this? Do I think he knows what he was doing or do I think he makes mistakes? And I 
am much faster at answering it these days. It doesn't take me two weeks now, but I can, you know, pretty quickly be like, yes, yes, yes. I trust that God knows what he's doing. So now how am I going to act in response to that trust? And so that's just, you know, if I were to be sitting across from a well, anybody, but especially a woman, a woman in leadership, I would just put my hands on your shoulder and ask you the same thing. <laughs> Do you believe God is sovereign? Do you think he knows what he was doing? And, and if he does, then how can you learn to rest in it? And then how does that motivate you to do what he's asked you to do? Amen. That's very good. Yes. Um, as you're looking, uh, come the conference is coming up. And as you look towards the future, do you foresee continuing the conference? And do you have any changes or goals in the upcoming years that you want to see happen? I know you brought back breakouts this year. Yeah, yeah. we just brought and breakouts we back. About that. They um, had uh, died a COVID death, but we we refunded <laughs> them and, <laughs> and brought them back this year. So I'm excited about that. You know, I as of right now, I definitely see it being part of our future. Um you know, for a while there, I thought like, I don't know, people don't really go to conferences, but I think it's just such an unusual conference and kind of its makeup that at least and as long as people want to come, then we will do it. Um, and I think it serves a good purpose for um, what we're trying to do in the hearts and lives of leaders. You know, when it comes to um, leading and loving it as a whole, I'm very excited about what we do on like a week to week, month to month basis for leaders. Some of that is brand new. We have a brand new thing called Together that, that gives us monthly coaching with leaders. And it's like a smaller, more intimate group, which I just love. I'm loving that. I love our cohorts that we have. And so we have this big kind of way of getting to help people, which is the conference. But we also have these more intimate um more small group minded kind of things that give us the ability to take fewer leaders a little deeper. So I like having both options, not just for leaders, but for us too. And so as of right now, we're very excited and very passionate about the things that the Lord has put in front of us. You know, as soon as he says, don't do that, do something else. We're up for it. We'll do it. But right now I think we, um, we're really excited about what he's called us to do. Yeah, I think, I mean, my observation is that you're hitting something that's so vitally needed. So I, I think that's probably why you're having such a, you know, a large impact with that. Um, I wish, I mean, I know there's men's ones out there. I'm a little <laughs> jealous, honestly. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I, um, I, I haven't found a, a, a great one in that niche yet, but um let, let me say this, going back to something you said before we ask you to wrap up with some details on getting registered if they haven't already. Um, you mentioned earlier on and, and even the growth that you've had as God has taken you through this experience, more people that you've met. I'm sure you're a totally different person now than you were when it first started. Uh, we're always hopefully God's creating a better version every year, right? Um, if you go back say 15 years ago when you first had this idea and visit yourself now back in time this is a common question i know but what what would yourself think about what you're telling you now you know from your current self and vice versa and and uh would you tell that person to hurry up a little more have a little more <laughs> faith or i mean i'm not sure what the conversation would be you know what i think i i think i might tell the the younger me um, that you can do more than you think you can. Um, I, I led a lot at that, in that season with a no for me. Like if someone would ask me to speak, I'd be like, Oh no, I'm not a speaker. Or somebody asked me to, you know, do whatever. I just always kind of led with a no until I had somebody really challenge me to let God stretch my capacity. And I wish I had done that a little sooner. Um, because maybe I would have, I would be a little, <laughs> maybe I would, I would have, have a little more experience built up by now. But um, I, I think I would, I would tell her you're capable more than you think. Let God stretch you. You're not, it's not going to kill you if you fail. It's okay. You're going to learn a lot. You don't have to do it again. Move on. 
but um and to step out with a little bit more um maybe a little bit more gusto than fear you know um I feel like especially in the early days everything we did I just tried to tiptoe into because I was so worried it might implode and I think now I'm a little bit more like well if it, <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll find something that works. And so um, I think we're able to probably get to some solutions faster now than we, than we did earlier. But, you know, and at the same time, I think about the journey that God has had me on in the last 16 years and, and I wouldn't trade any of it. I wouldn't trade like the really hard time. I wouldn't trade the times where I was too scared to do whatever, um, because I did learn a lot. I did learn a lot about myself and I learned a lot about the Lord and, and his patience. I learned a lot about his patience with me. I need, I require a lot of patience from the Lord. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but no regrets at all, but I definitely would, en would encourage that younger version to believe in herself a little bit more. Amen. Probably a good yeah. message for just about everybody, right? Because absolutely. So tell us, uh, we're, we're going to be attaching the link, obviously, for registration to this podcast, getting that out there and everything. But it's coming up very soon. Just give us some last minute details and a last minute push on why everyone, if they haven't signed up already, should be a part of it. Well, thank you. I think they should. Listen, I. Yeah. I said it is my favorite two days of the year and whether you lead at church or the marketplace or at home this is for you this is for your heart as a leader even for those of you who think I'm not a leader yes you are the Lord has put mm -hmm. a circle of people in your influence that you can encourage and disciple and uplift and let's just call it what it is that's leadership and so um, so if that's you, which it is every woman, then we would love to have you at Leading and Loving It. It's October 22nd and 23rd in Las Vegas. Um, we would love for you to come in person. That would be amazing because there's nothing better than getting to do some something in person. But if you can't make it, then join us online. You can actually have a whole year to watch it on demand. You can live stream it or you can watch it later. And so plenty of time to get encouraged while you're putting your makeup on and uh, an opportunity to kind of get poured into. So you can just go to leadingandlovingit.com. You can get registered there. I'll just, I'm going to give you spur of the moment. If you use the code 30 in capital letters, it'll save you 30%. We would love to have you. Be amazing. Nice. 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 That's a nice little perk there. Awesome. <laughs> Well, if you have not registered for this, and especially since you can get it online and you could see it all year, and even if you do go, you could still see it all year mm -hmm. and watch it again, yep. it, it's definitely going to be worth your time. It's going to change your life. Uh, I think you, if you're out there wherever you are, even if it's a long distance from Las Vegas, you need to take advantage of this at least yep. once. I think once you do, you'll want to do it every year. So, Lori, thank you so much yes, for you. your time and, and sharing with us. Well, what else do you want to say? I know you I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. So uh I wish you did the the conference more than once a year, you know. Twice <laughs> a year, you know. It might kill me, Val, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to see you. I can't wait to hug your neck. Thank you guys so much for um for what you do for the kingdom, but what you do through this podcast. Thank you both. And thank you, Lori. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Bye.